When the music fades and all is stripped away and I simply come longing just to bring something that's a word that will bless my heart. I'll bring you more than a song for a song in itself is not what you have required. You search much deeper within through the way things appear. You're looking into my heart. I'm coming back to the heart of worship. And it's all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. I'm sorry, Lord, for the thing I made it. When it's all about you, it's all about you, Jesus. It's all about Jesus. It's all about Jesus. Amen. I missed all of that. It's going to be short and sweet. Um, we're all familiar with John 3, 16, mm -hmm. verse 17. Uh, the word of God says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might have, him might be saved. Amen? Amen. Amen. Let's pray. Father in heaven, Lord, as I preach from the topic, what's your net worth? May the words of my mouth and meditation in my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my shepherd, not. Mm -hmm. It's funny that question that Capital One asks, what's in your wallet? Kind of makes you think sometimes, especially around church folk. Um, you come to church, sometimes they look in, because like at some places, church is a fashion show. So if you don't have the hottest Amani suit on or, or the newest fresh frames and lenses, or you not pushing a, a Lexus, as Brother Dan was talking about earlier, or a Cadillac, that, you know, you have not arrived. If you you haven't, you know, gone to a, an elite school, um, people sometimes have a tendency to look at you and think that you're unworthy or you're not worth much. Hmm. And then you have the Forbes list that's laced with Oprah Winfrey's, the Bill Gates, and the Warren Buffett's, and, and all of those different names. But um, the crazy thing is, I don't care if you're from the ghetto curbs or the suburbs, you have a divine net worth that no amount of riches could ever buy. We are gazillionaires because we are God's children. And the thing about it is we've been taught, we've been programmed, I should say, to believe that we are unworthy. Unworthy to have a job that pays us well. Unworthy to have the best things that money could buy. Unworthy to have a job where we're treated as royalty. We believe that because society continuously tells us that. Society continues to devalue um, who we are. Uh, when we see shows like The Biggest Loser, when, when someone is overweight, they're looked upon as though they're not enough. When we look at shows... Uh, 
and see people like that who 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 come and and they have problems with obesity and they can't get a raise on their jobs or they're treated a certain particular way because of the way that they look society has taught us to devalue ourselves and to devalue our brothers and sisters so that's why Pam and them over in the PJs want to buy their children those brand new J's, those brand new Jordans. That's why when they go school shopping, they want to buy the biggest and the fanciest things. But the thing about it is, true network starts here in your mind. That's why the Bible says, let this mind be in you that it's also in Christ Jesus. If you look at Christ and if you look at the things that he went through uh, prior to the cross, uh, when he first was called, when he first was called, when he went to go see John the Baptist, and John the Baptist was preaching out in the wilderness, Christ already knew his net worth. He didn't need anybody to tell him, but the word of God declares that when Christ came, when John the Baptist was preaching the gospel, John the Baptist was Jesus' big cousin. When he was preparing the way for Jesus, he was declaring to the people to turn the hearts and minds back to God. He was preparing that path and setting that path ablaze so that Jesus' ministry could start. When Jesus came on the scene, the first thing that John said, he was preaching his sermon and he said, Behold the Lamb of God which takes away the sins of the world. What's so dynamic about that is that everyone in this room has a network, this net worth that's so divine that other people will see it and want to be a part of it. When they saw Christ, when John the Baptist pointed out who Christ was, Christ knew who he was, but John the Baptist declared it even in the midst of a sermon, spoke the word to the people who had come out to come hear John the Baptist, and he said, I came so you could baptize me. And John the Baptist said, I'm so worthy, I can't tie your shoelaces or your sandals. And Jesus said, suffer it to be so. Because, see, listen, even when you're the man of God, even when you serve God, even when you think you are at your highest, when God has an assignment for you, sometimes we belittle ourselves. God calls us for a position, and we say, no, God, I'm not worthy to tie your shoes. And God says, listen, suffer it to be so. Because I have something planned for you You have to suffer to be so I want to be in connection And in cooperation And in celebration And elevation of who you are I'm willing to get down and dirty with you Because that's the kind of God that I am John the Baptist said I, I, I can't baptize you He said suffer it to be so Let's go out in the water we gonna, You gonna baptize me big cuz <laughs> John the Baptist Baptized Jesus Christ And the word of God says That when Christ came forward And he came up The heavens declared God the Father said This is my son In whom I am well pleased And the word of God said That the spirit of God fell down Like a big dove Upon Christ Jesus And the word of God said Even in the midst of this As soon as that happened The spirit of God took Jesus Out into the wilderness To be tempted by the devil Now notice what I said Christ knew who he was when he came to see John the Baptist. John the Baptist knew who he was when he, when, when, when he seen Jesus. But he needed to declare who Jesus was to everybody that was there to let them know this is the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. You have to get close and connected to him because he's going to be the Lamb that washes every sin from everybody. The perfect sacrifice. We find Jesus knowing his net worth, net worth before he got to John to ba the Baptist. And now the Spirit of God was descended from heaven. Watch this. On earth, 
the declaration of God, the declaration of Christ is happening right there. John the Baptist knew it. He had spoke forth the word. He had prophetically pro he pro he prophesied over Christ, baptized Christ, and now God the Father speaks, declared. First we see action, kinesthetically, Christ going down in water. We see all the elements here. The water is here. The land is here. The Holy Ghost comes from heaven, which is air, comes down, baptizes Christ, and the air takes Christ. The Holy Spirit air takes Christ into the wilderness, into the desert, back into, comes from water and goes into a desert. Forty days. No food. No drink. <laughs> And all of a sudden, here comes Satan tipping in. Ah, tempting him. It's written, if you got a pen, it's written in Matthew chapter 4. It talks about how <laughs> in Matthew chapter 4, you don't have to turn to it now because we only got a little bit of time. I got about 10 minutes. <laughs> but, but, but in Matthew, it talks about... <laughs> Satan trying to tempt Christ. We find Christ still knowing his net worth and who he is. And every time Satan came at Christ, what Christ did was he hit him with the word of God. Mm -hmm. Now get this. If you notice that the book of John starts, when the book of John starts, it says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was God, and the Word became flesh. When it's talking about the Word, it's talking about the Christ. So Christ is the living Word. That's how the chapter of John starts. John unleashes Christ this way. But now you see in Matthew 4, Christ, who is the living word, the proclamation of God, and animation in the midst of every situation, now face to face with the devil. The devil comes to Christ and he uses words, if you be the son of God. Guess what? We don't recognize how powerful we are. And I'm going to tell you why. One of the things is, the devil and people will always get you to try to question who you are and whose you are. And if he let that if hit you in the head, if if was a fifth, we all get drunk. <laughs> so if when he said, if you the son of God, if you are the son of God, command these stones. So his first declaration and so forth to try to get him to test his net worth and to test who he was was for him to try to knock Christ upside the head, for him to not believe in who he was and whose he was. When you're a child of the king, if ain't in your vocabulary, if ain't in your vocabulary, Christ didn't take, when he said that, Jesus said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone. See, it's like, came to him, he was, he was fasting for 40 days. At 40 days, the body goes into starvation period. So he came to Christ at his weakest. He didn't come to him at his strongest. After he was baptized and carried by the Spirit, he came to him after, there was a shortage of water. Mm. Wasn't nothing happening. His lips became dry. His vision was a little distorted being in the desert. He came to him at his weakest. And oftentimes that's how he tries to come to us. To get us to question our net worth. But when we know who we are. We don't have to think about it. We know who we are. If you know you can grow. And you'll never allow the devil to take you below that standard. Mm -hmm. So knowing your net worth is important. The second thing is speaking your net worth. 
I love that because many times we don't speak on that word. I love how, how Dan was actually elaborating and letting Brother George know what it is. Dropping jewels. Dropping jewels. We are children of the king. And what that really means and what we really need to know is that we are made in his image. And if you look at God in the beginning, the word of God says that the earth was, with, was, was, was void and without space, Genesis 1.1. And dark. And the word of God said the spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters and said let there be light. And light showed up. And look light is still popping off right now. He said that in Genesis. But here we are in 2014 and light is still going down. If God spoke it into existence. If God created us in his image. We can speak it into existence too. Stop doubting yourself. Mm -hmm. Stop doubting yourself. You are a child of the king. You are a declaration of independence. Live like it. We ain't supposed to be locked up in bondage. We supposed to be children of the declaration of independence. We supposed to speak freedom into our life. Speak power into our life. Speak words that make the devil tremble because he doesn't because he can't handle a man with a plan who knows God's plan for their life. Amen. Amen. That's right. Preach. Satan tried. Christ hit him upside the head with the word every time because he knew his self worth. Satan said, "You know what?" I can't get him on a food angle. He, he, I can't get him with that. Well, you know what? Let me pick him up. He he all tired and all that. Let me swoop him up. Let me do a Superman move and, and pick him up and take him on the highest pinnacle. Like how you see how big Riverside Church is. You see that staple up there. He took him higher than that. Took Christ up there. And imagine how weak he was 40 days with no food. Come on, man. If I listen, I got diabetes. I got diabetes. And if and if I don't eat. If I don't eat at a certain time and I ain't, I'm like woozy, all that other stuff. Negro got to lay down and be in the bed. So, so, so Christ didn't have no ailments, but to be without food for 40 days, to be without water for 40 days, he was real weak. He said, I'm going to pick him up. I'm going to do a Superman and bring him up here and say, listen, if you are the son of God, um, you can, you can fall off this building and, and God will give his angels charge over thee. Now listen, this is the funny part because when, when, when Satan came to Christ the first time, when he first said this to him, he spoke these words and said, if you be the son of God, command these stones be made bread, right? He came at him from that angle, from the earthly angle. But now look in the heavenly angle, he's saying to him, because first he came with his own words. He came with, the devil came with his own words. Now, he said, you know what? I'm going to take it to the next level. That's why he picked them up. That's why he put him up there on, on, on the pinnacle of the church. And he said, this time, using the word of God. He's quoting from the book of Psalms. If you be who you say you are, just throw yourself off and he God the Father shall give his angels charge over thee so that he can pick, so that the angels can capture, the angels can, can catch you and be a wide receiver lest you dash your foot against a stone. Christ said, are you serious? <laughs> it is written the word, who is the word who became flesh that John talks about, said it is written every time the devil tried to come up against him. Satan was tight. He said, I'm going to take him to a higher place now. I've taken him to the highest church steeple, and I'm taking him up to the mountain. I'm taking him all the way up to the mountain. When I think of mountains, I think of mountains. St. Helens, this, 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 this huge mountain. And I think of, of how weak he must have been now because now you could ask Ella, I'm not afraid of heights. He can tell you, I can, I can climb a tree like a monkey. He is sitting here in action. I, I, I love heights. <laughs> but you get me inside a plane, 
<laughs> I get a little uneasy. Not that I've never flown before, but I, I, it was a while since I had flown, and, and then I've been fl you know, flying now. It's like, <laughs> it was a while for like, me taking a long flight. Mm -hmm. And we did it. We went on a long flight, and they, I was bothered. I was like, whoa, the turbulence. I was like, yo, mm -hmm. this ain't my staff. <laughs> so, 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 mind you, he's taking Christ from the pinnacle of the church and now taking him to the mountain. Mm -hmm. When you get up to a certain level, the wind in the air up there is a little thinner. So you breathe a little differently. Your lungs is trying to like, you know, mean, adjust. So <laughs> you're going to have some big breathing problems. And the word of God says he showed him. And this is before uh, the matrix when you saw people moving all this. This is before Terminator 2 and Terminator 3 when you see all these different things and these things uh, with, the, with the automatic um, computers where just moving screens. The word of God says that while he put him, while he brought Christ on the mountain, the devil uh, showed Christ in panoramic view all of the things of the world, all the riches of the world. So it flashed. It was like a highlight reel to a movie. So he flashed Vegas and all these different things. He flashed. Uh, <laughs> He flashed the U.S. Mint. He flashed all these places of currency. He flashed all of this power. He flashed thrones. He flashed all these things before Christ. And he said, if you just bow down to me, I know you hungry. If you just bow down to me, I'll give you all of these things. Christ said, it is written. It is written. It is written. Kept saying it. Kept smacking the devil upside his head. And the word of God declares that the devil ran. And left him alone. And the word declares that those same angels. That the devil told him to throw himself off the building. That God would send the angels to catch him. Those very same angels came and provided him with food mm. and drink mm. to replenish him. Mm. What I want to say is your net worth is so powerful that no man can deny you. No woman can deny you. No devil can deny you. But you have to know that the word declares, Christ said, greater works will you be able to do than I did while we're not doing it. Because our mind ain't right. So once we understand our mental self-worth, our spiritual self-worth, and what God wants to do is, my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches and glories. <clears throat> Second Samuel twenty two thirty three. God is my strength and power, and He maketh my way perfect. Ha, quote David, Psalm twenty one. The Lord is my shepherd; I shall not want. Job twenty seven. The Lord is my light; of whom shall I fear? All of these things are proclamations and declarations that God has already provided us with everything that we want. If you look at Psalm twenty three. It tells you that God is the abundance amplifier. Let's look at that. I just want to close with that. Just let's look at Psalm 23. You got to see this to believe this. And I mean, you really had to look at it and look at it from your self worth. Psalm chapter 23. Chapter 23. You see, it's like in the middle of it. We're going to close with this. Because I'm already five minutes over time. I ain't got nowhere to go. Everybody has it? Amen. It says, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down 
and green pastures. I want to stop right there for a second. Mm -hmm. Guess what? There's a lot of people in the world who are always looking for a place where the grass is greener. But with God, the grass is always greener. A lot of times, we don't look at it from that perspective because to the naked eye, it kind of looks like things are drying up. It doesn't look as though the grass is greener. But, 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 but use your visual, use your spiritual eye, if you will. David says, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Mm -hmm. He leadeth me, I mean, he maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside still waters. So green pastures is actually uh, saying that God is the place, God will put you in a place of green pastures beside still waters. Now, now. Think about this. Rivers aren't still. Think about it. Oceans aren't still. They crash and dash. But because they're still, there's something about water. I don't know if you, if, if, if you can swim or not, but there's something about water that gives you a serene peacefulness. When you're in a shower and the water is hitting you, there's something about a uh, uh, water that calms the very essence of who we are because water makes up a lot of who we are. So when the word says he maketh me to lie down in green pastures, God is planting you in a place that is that is ever abundant, is ever green, ever developing, ever exploding with life. And he leads you beside still waters. It says he restores my soul. That means that everything that you've lost, he'll restore it. But he won't just restore it on a physical level. He'll restore it from the inside out, refreshing your soul, leading you into paths of righteousness for his name's sake. It is not by accident that you've shown up here. It is not by accident that we met at the Justice Center, at New York United, at, at Momentum Education. It is not by accident that we met at Mount of Olives. It's by divine orchestration of God. He knew it before we were in our parents' wombs. That's why David can say, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff comfort me. That's why I ain't never scared to travel in any hood at any time, because I walk with the king. And I don't care how many guns people got, God made me bulletproof when I was doing the devil's work, and he got me bulletproof now. Ain't no bullet could touch me. Because God got me covered. That's why David can say, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. But thy rod and staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest. This, this is the part that you really had to get. This really tells you what your cell phone is. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Watch this. Back in the days, me and my brother used to fight a lot. That's my, I love my brother. I love my sister. We used to fight a lot like cats and dogs. And so because me and him used to fight, he thought he was going to be doing that to my little sister. And I'm like, no, I'm checking that. So what I would do is if he started messing with my sister, I'd put my sister behind him, I mean behind me, and take care of my brother. And I would, you know, he'd be like a time out, like I ain't messing with her because Art just put me in check. What God is saying is that, look, in the midst of your haters, in the midst of all of them, I'm going to sit you down. And prepare a table of feasts. Cats can be coming with oozes to come get you. Cats can be coming with bazookas to come get you. I'm going to sit you down in the presence of your enemies. And they not going to be able to touch you. I'm going to have them on time out. Like, like, the, <laughs> like they're in the movie The Blair Witch Project. They're going to be like this in the corner. I'm going to put the devil in time out. While I prepare a table and lace it with the finer things of life. Says, Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemy. Thou anointest my head with oil. Meaning that the oil of the Holy Spirit is going to illuminate our minds in such a way that it just keeps dripping. His light, his goodness is just going to be dripping all over us. Because 
He's the abundance amplifier. My cup runneth over. God is the abundance amplifier. I don't care how much money you've ever had. It can't amount to what God wants to give you. And then David says, surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. It's important that we know our net worth. When we know it, we can show it, we can grow it. It is show up in everything that we do. When we go to look for jobs, when we go, when we're on the street, when we're meeting people. No fear. Make it happen. When we was riding that bike, when we were kids, we didn't give up, we fell, but we got right back up. We were fearless children. We, we need to stay fearless children because we're God's children. Our net worth <laughs> is immeasurable. We saw that because the Bible says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. His blood is royalty. We are covered by it, which makes us, we're all on God's Forbes list, on a divine Forbes <laughs> list. We rich beyond measure. That's why in heaven, there's a mansion with each one of our names on it. And all we got to do is just be faithful. No eye have seen, nor ear heard the joys of heaven that God has prepared for us. Tell me, mansion. But your wildest dreams can't even imagine. You can't even fathom. That's the type of God we serve. Know your self-worth. And never let anybody depreciate your value. Right. Be blessed. Amen. 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 As you go, tell the world. As you go, tell the world. Tell the world about Jesus. Tell them about his love. Tell the world about Jesus. Tell them about his love. As you go, it goes like this. Tell the world. As you go, tell the world. Tell the world about Jesus. Tell them about his love. Tell the world about Jesus. Tell them about his love. As we go, tell the world. As we go, tell the world. Tell the world about Jesus. Tell them about his love. Tell the world about Jesus. Tell them about his love as you go. Let's say as we tell the world as we go. Tell the world. Tell the world about Jesus. Tell them about his love. Tell the world about Jesus. Tell them about his love as we go. Tell the world as we go. Tell the world as we go.